My name is Caleb Sample and I'm happy to present this video summary of our article, Incorporating Product Gland Inhomogeneity into Head and Neck Treatment Optimization Through the Use of Artificial Base Plans. Picture a desolate desert, with a tumbleweed drifting across a hard, cracked floor. Well, that floor is probably close to what your tongue would look like if you stopped producing saliva. The condition of having a dry mouth due to low saliva production is called xerostomia. It's known to drastically diminish the quality of life of whoever has it, and unfortunately it is quite often a severe side effect for head and neck radiotherapy patients. This is a result of radiation damage to the saliva glands, and in particular, the biggest saliva glands which are on either side of the mouth just in front of the ears, and are called the product glands. It seems to me that the old saying, you don't know a good thing till it's gone, applies perfectly to saliva. In recent years, the onset of volume modulated arc therapy, or VMAT, has allowed for radiation to be swept in 360 degrees around the patient, all while being reshaped by high density collimators so that tumor tissue can be targeted, while healthy organs such as the product gland can be spared as much as possible. The reshaping of the radiation is optimized automatically by the planning system based on certain constraints set by a treatment planner. The current standard of care for minimizing dose to product glands is to constrain the mean dose to the glands. A constraint on the whole mean dose suits a gland that has a homogeneous dose response, but for inhomogeneous organs it fails to account for any variance of functionality within different subregions. The relative importance of different subregions within the product glands for predicting post-treatment xerostomia was recently quantified, revealing that radiation to certain chunks within the product gland appear to be much more detrimental than radiation to other chunks. Our work aims to incorporate this new data into the treatment planning process. Treatment planning systems allow patient dose histories to be included in optimization by loading previously received base plans. This allows for dose already received in previous plans to be included in the dose calculation for the new plan. What we've done is retroactively create artificial base plans for patients which assign dose only within product glands, with different amounts in different regions, such that regional dose is proportional to importance. These plans can be used to trick the optimizer into thinking that more important product gland regions have already received more dose than less important regions. And if the planner sets an upper bound dose constraint for the product gland, important areas will be preferentially spared over unimportant areas. Treatment plans for 15 patients were then optimized for 5 different types of base plans, as well as without base plans. The resultant subregional product gland mean doses were calculated and then run through a predictive model for saliva output loss at one year post radiotherapy. Significant reductions in dose to important subregions of the gland were found, as well as significant improvements in saliva output predictions for patients planned with artificial base plans. In summary, a universal method for incorporating suborgan dose constraints into VMAT treatment planning has been featured as an effective means of steering dose away from important regions of the product gland. This method may also be applied to other organs at risk for which spatial importance data exists.